Let me ask you, first of all, about the Canadians. We're hearing a report, Philippe, that there are Canadians in a group of people who are needing to be rescued in a national park. What information do you have on that? Well, it all comes from a Facebook post uh, that the National Fire Agency coordinating rescue efforts near Hualien put out this afternoon saying there's a group of 12 uh, people that left early this morning. They went hiking uh, what is called the Shagadang Trail. It's a 4.1 kilometer trail that you need to go through a tunnel to get to. And this tunnel has since been cut off uh, by fallen rocks. So. Uh, Basically, what they're trying to do, what the uh, rescue efforts are concentrating on, on doing is to uh, clear the debris and get to those 12 uh, hikers that are still stranded there. So we tried to get more information. We don't have uh, more as of now, but uh, mm -hmm. it appeared that the 12 hikers were uh, still alive and doing well. It's just a matter of getting to them and getting them back safely to Hualien. Okay, we'll keep uh, track of that part of the story. I'm interested in the wider rescue and recovery operation. Again, we've been looking at those live pictures of what is clearly part of the recovery now with that heavy equipment on scene. But what is the latest there? Are they still looking for people who are trapped, Philippe, elsewhere? Yeah, um, we're looking at uh, 56 people that are still trapped, either in uh, uh, partially collapsed buildings or stranded, like the group of 12 uh, hikers that left early in the morning. Uh, that number has been going down uh, continuously throughout the day. Uh, the, uh, the number of uh, casualties has been going up, though. We're up to nine people dead, over 900 people that have been in injured. Uh, but you mentioned the recovery efforts. That that's where it's all being concentrated on tonight in Hualien on the East Coast. You have to know that it's a far uh, place to get to. It, there's only one highway. There's only uh, an old school train track to get to. That highway has partially collapsed and that uh, railway is not functioning either tonight. So Hualien is basically isolated from the rest of Taiwan. So it's hard to get a, a full sense of what the recovery efforts are like. Uh, because it's hard even for uh, support to get to uh, Hualien tonight. Um, and we have had over 130 aftershocks today. So uh, the worry now for, uh, for fire and, and police uh, men trying to assist people over there is that some of the partially collapsed buildings might collapse uh, with these aftershocks because they're expected to last for three to four days and they could reach a magnitude of seven. So just to give you a sense of how bad it is, like uh, I don't even know if it's aftershocks or if it's in my head. We've had so many today. That is so interesting. Listen, I appreciate the reporting, but I'm also very much intrigued by your own experience, Philippe, because what we heard was the, the, the shaking went on for a very long period of time. It was quite vigorous. I mean, there in the Capitol, what, what did you experience just before 8 this morning? Well, here you have to understand that uh, in uh, Taipei, we're about 200 kilometers from Hualien. So uh, the magnitude was about 5.5, 5.6, what we felt. It lasted for 30 seconds and it was quite vigorous. Obviously, the, the, the strongest quake I felt in the year and a half I've been here. It felt like I was on a rocky boat uh, and a very rocky boat and it lasted for over 30 seconds. So it's quite long and I had to like hang on to shelves of bookshelves that were uh, uh, looking to topple down. So I knew right away it, it was one of those hard, uh, strong, powerful quakes. And then we heard that it's the strongest since 1999. So it's almost miraculous that there's only 934 uh, injured people as of now and nine death. When you look at the uh, at the previous one 25 years ago, which was about the same magnitude, but like uh, close to 2,500 people died. Philippe, thank you. Uh, still continue to obviously be vigilant, stay safe there, but I really do appreciate the conversation with you this morning and hearing what's going on in the capital of Taiwan. Philippe Leblanc, our colleague from Radio-Canada, live with me this morning.